Hi, in this video I thought we'd have another look at the power supply boards for the FuelTech FY6900. So last time we had a look at the DC conversion board that took the 24 volt DC supply down to the supply rails for the signal generator. This time we're going to have a look at the AC board that takes the 230 volt AC mains and drops it down to 24 volt DC. So let's have a little look at the PCB that I've been working on. And here you can see this is an identical size and it's got the same mounting holes as the other board. And on the left hand side we've got 230 volts or 115 volt AC coming in. We've got a little power module converter that takes the AC voltage and drops it down to 24 volts DC. So that's a little off the shelf module that just solders in to the PCB. And then on the right hand side here we've got the 24 volt uh, supply that then goes off to the other board. Now what I wanted to look at this time is creepage and clearance distances. So we've got some tracers here which are relatively close on this PCB and there is this little table here that we can use to work out the minimum distance between any two tracers on the PCB. So in the UK we've got our AC supply at 230 volt AC. That means that our peak to peak voltage is about 380 volts and if we have a look at the table probably the closest thing is the 500 volt uh, line here and basically what it's saying is for two tracers or two points adjacent to each other that have potentially up to 500 volts between them the minimum spacing needs to be 2.5 millimeters. Now once it's dropped down to tracers and we've got our solder mask on top of it we can decrease that distance right down to 0.8 millimeters uh, because the solder mask provides an insulating layer and the um, dielectric constant of air doesn't apply because it's now coated. And if we take it a little bit further and have the tracers on an inner layer on the PCB where all of the air is eliminated and the insulation resistance is even higher, we can uh, decrease that distance right down to 0.25 millimeters. So these are the minimum clearance rules between any two tracers or any two conductive points on the PCB. Now in certain designs, there may be some other considerations that we want to consider. So, for example, if there's any chance of any fluids or moisture uh, condensing on the PCB, or even if there's any chance of any flux residues on the board that may turn conductive over time, we may also want to consider the creepage distances. So, the creepage is the straight line distance along an insulating material such as the PCB, whereby if you had some contaminants on the PCB, uh, some of the voltage might track between the two tracers. So if we literally just have two tracers adjacent to each other, our creepage distance is the same as the clearance distance, and it's just this red line between the two tracers. But we can increase that by adding slots or adding grooves in the PCB. So for example, if we've got this groove in the board, we've actually increased the creepage distance, because uh, if we look at the uh, straight line here, that's obviously longer than this one here. And even further, if we have a complete slot in the board, the creepage distance increases considerably because let's say this board was contaminated, the current would have to take the path all the way around here um, to the other trace. So these are some things that we might want to consider when designing a board that has higher voltages on it. And we'll do a little experiment shortly just to have a look at what that actually looks like. But um, essentially what we're looking at is we may want to put some slots in the PCB between these two traces. Now these distances are 2.5 millimeters or greater, so we don't have to worry about the clearance distances on this board. It might just make sense to uh, add a little bit of creepage distance. So what we can do is just have a look at the design rules for JLC PCB. And here they are. So for any non-plated slot, so that is just a plain cut in the PCB, the minimum diameter here of the cutter is one millimeter. So that's the minimum that we can do at JLC PCB. That's pretty much standard for most PCB manufacturers. A few can do 0.8 millimeter, but uh, the one millimeter slot is basically the standard. So what we need to do is create some mechanical features on the PCB that tell the router cutter where to cut once it's at the PCB manufacturer. So what we're gonna be using is the 2D line tool and that uh, is on the mechanical one layer. So almost all PCB tools will have some mechanical layer that's dedicated to saying where to do cutting. This is different from the drill layer. So this is where it has things like the board outline and then it also has the slots that are gonna be routed out. So we've got the 
2D line tool selected. And on this PCB, we've got our 230 volts between these two tracers. So we're going to put a, uh, a line along here and then follow it down. Now we do need to be careful that we don't uh, compromise the structural integrity of the PCB too much by uh, completely cutting the PCB in half. So uh, that's one thing to look out for. Ooh, it should be okay along here. So there we go. If you have a look at that, that separated the 230 volt tracers by this slot. And then just what we need to do is change the thickness of that slot to one millimeter, which is the minimum cutter diameter. Right, so there's our finished PCB and it's got all of the slots here in one millimeter. What we can do now is just create the Gerber file. So we'll just check the output and make sure that we've got no DRC violations. And there we go, so that's all okay. Now we can create the Gerber files and we want this in metric. And on this tool, it says the slotting slash routing layer is on mechanical layer one. So that's the one that we've got all of our drawings on. Press OK, and it should create the Gerber files. So then what we're gonna do is upload the files to the JLC PCB website. So we click quote now, and then we add the Gerber files, click on the zip file. And what we just wanna do is check that the image looked correct and it has the slots in the right place. And that means that uh, it's been recognized properly. So what we can see here is definitely we've got these slots here. So uh, we're all good. So we're good to place the order. It's two layer board. And it's slightly bigger than the 100 by 100 millimeters. So the price is gonna be slightly higher than the standard $2. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, all we need to do. So that's coming out as $7.40 uh, for the five PCBs. Right, so what we've got here is one of the PCBs that I used for designing the trailing edge dimmer. And we've got on the right hand side some terminal blocks and you can see some of them have slots in them and some don't. So what I've done is I've cut the tracers uh, where applicable and then attached some wires to this terminal block here that has the slot and this one that doesn't. I thought what we'd do is just have a look at the difference in insulation resistance. So first of all we'll do it dry and that should give us basically infinite impedance. And then we'll spritz it with water very lightly and see if there is any difference between the two. So I'll just hook this up to the Fluke insulation resistance meter. And I'm just placing it on this silicone mat just so that we don't get any conduction through the ESD mat. Now, these mats do come with things like microscopes. Whatever you do, don't use them for ESD sensitive devices because I had one of these sat on my bench for a couple of weeks and then when I went to peel it off the ESD mat you could hear all of the ESD from the silicone it had built up quite a charge so be careful of these but anyway we've got this hooked up now and if we press the test button it will test it at 1000 volts and you can see we've got greater than one gig ohm of impedance we'll just check the one with the slot as well but we should have the same figure here this should just give us a reference point and we'll press test again. And there we go. So greater than a gig ohm without uh, 1000 volts being tested. Now what we do is I've just got a little spray bottle. And I'm just gonna spray a little bit of water in the area. Right, so I mix some water with some dish soap just to get the water to emulsify on the surface of the board because the solder mask is quite hydrophobic. Let's test uh, the insulation resistance now without the slot. And that's at about 120 mega ohms. So we have dropped that slightly. Let's try it on the one with the slot. And there we go, we're still at one gig ohm. So you can see the difference that having the slot there makes. So basically what we're seeing is because we've only got this very short distance of conductive path when there's some moisture on the board, we see the insulation resistance drop quite dramatically. In a situation like this where there's a slot there, the voltage has to track all the way around the slot and therefore a small amount of moisture isn't going to decrease the insulation resistance quite so dramatically. The important thing to note there is despite having the slot, if there is a voltage that's sufficient to arc across the two points, the slot isn't going to help us at all.